an exciting opportunity for both a practicing physiotherapist as well as graduating or master's level students in musculoskeletal medicine to get a comprehensive hands-on workshop. Uh, to register for the course, uh, easiest way is to just email us at alld.pune, P-U-N-E, at gmail.com. Uh, once again, uh, uh, it's an exciting opportunity uh, of hands-on course uh, all day long, four days with post-test, uh, and I hope to uh, see you all there. Thank you. Good afternoon, one and all. I, Dr. Bhakti Khatiria student of musculoskeletal physiotherapy from Sanchetri Institute College of Physiotherapy welcomes all the Physio TV viewers on our new series that is Little Master Series on the talk uh, on today's talk that is need for physioplasticity. So before that I thanks this institute uh, for providing me with this great opportunity. So since this talk is dedicated to our undergraduate students I want all of us to know the core and the, uh, know the core meaning of what is the term plasticity mean. So basically, term plasticity means uh, ability to modify structurally and functionally based on imposed demands on the given system. So uh, whatever uh, demands are placed on the system, the system tries to modify itself and this modifiability of that particular system is called as plasticity and it is actually reflected as a structural change and also functional change okay so plasticity occurs at many levels right from brain level network level intercellular level intracellular level levels of biochemical levels, genetic levels. So plasticity is already taking place at multiple levels. So it's, it's, it is uh, dependent on the rule that whatever system you use the most, uh, the, the, bond, the functionality of that system strengthens. So you use it or you lose it kind of. So you all would have come across the terminologies, neuroplasticity, muscle plasticity in your clinics. So what does neuroplasticity mean? So it is ability of brain to change or rewire throughout a person's life. So this neuroplasticity forms the basis of learning. This also forms the basis for brain repair after the injury. Okay. So how does this take place now? So the, the brain is made up of multiple neurons and each neuron is attached to many other neurons via synaptic connections. So one neuron sends the impulse to another neuron via the neurotransmitters. So the presynaptic neuron releases neurotransmitters and the impulses are, uh, the, the neurotransmitters are attached to the receptors on postsynaptic neurons. And this is how the transmission or connections from one neuron to another neuron takes place. So uh, what happens? Uh, so in a human, in human brain, some of the connections are very strong and uh, very active. So the connections that we use more frequently are more active. And the connections that are not uh, used or that are not stimulated or that are ignored by us are uh, dormant or are less, uh, uh, less active or rather inactive. So when the injury occurs, we try to bring up the inactive uh, neurons, inactive, inactive synaptic connections to become more active. And that is how the connections and the uh, functions is re-established. So this forms the basis uh, of how neuroplasticity takes place. Now, uh, this is in the case of nervous system. Now, in case of muscle system, like muscle plasticity, I told you, uh, so every muscle has a potential to convert from type 1 muscle fiber to type 2 muscle fiber based upon the stimulus that has been provided to the muscle. 
okay so yes it is also dependent on genetics but the based upon the stimulus that has been given to the muscle a uh, muscle has a immense potential to transfer itself from one type to another type literally at a tissue level so if human system has this immense potential of modification uh, modifiability to uh, evolve to change its types from one type to another type to evolve then why not physiotherapist so coming to the main topic of the day what is physioplasticity and what is the need for it so basically we uh, we all know plasticity is that means the modifiability or the changing patterns can take place throughout the age it is not that uh, that you have achieved your adolescence or you are done with teenaging so you won't uh, have a potential to grow or you will be stuck at the growth that you have achieved no it's not like that you have the potential to uh, the, uh, the 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 moment you start uh, even the process is slowed down but the process the uh, the possibility of modifiability or possibility of learning is lifetime okay so you use the system you strengthen that particular system you stop using that system so that system starts weakened out that's a simple rule now how do i define physioplasticity that's the main crux of today's talk to me this is a really very important topic because uh, at times we tend to get rigid on some ideas and um, i define physioplasticity as the ability of physiotherapist to quickly adapt to the changing circumstances so yes there are many situations we come across and i will be uh, talking about the same in the today's talk that uh, we really have to be very fluid and very flexible in our uh, our uh, approach towards patients and approach to deal with the problems in daily life so uh, what's the need of physioplasticity uh, sir i would like you to share the presentation will you please share the screen yeah so see most of the therapist have made a plan of action for a given set of diagnosis and they are very rigid with its implementation i know certain treatment really works and needs to be implemented the way it is programmed and even evidence supports them but sometimes the rehab plateaus or the potential of recovery plateaus or Uh, or the patient is not responsive to that treatment so what should be done in this case so if therapist is still stuck with the same plan of action and is not modify modifying uh, uh, his plan of action according to the need of patient and she is not addressing it and she is not uh, addressing the problem properly then uh that will not serve the purpose to the patient we need to be uh, very moldable to different containers and throughout the rehab process the the patient's containment to the rehab also changes we also need to address changing patterns that patients present to us with okay uh, so can you change the slide ah now we come across the many situations where we have to choose between a uh, various uh, options like we are provided many alternative options and we have to choose the one like most of the juniors uh, are stuck with the which modality of treatment to choose there are uh, at times patients also come to us with a rigid mindset that i want this particular treatment for this duration uh, this duration of time uh or at times we get the reference also with a uh, uh with with a which which prescribes the fixed particular uh, modalities for particular treatments so what to do in such situation what to choose what which way to go 
so here i uh, advise all of you to uh, understand five rules here so first and most important rule is to rule out red flags so the golden rule of medicine is to cause no harm to anyone so know this rule at any cost second know the principles of each modalities every modalities have given their basics principles contraindications indications understand them thoroughly the, the, the penetrations of modalities the effect of modality the mechanism of how it works everything is already been explained so you know uh, which modality to be given for which condition then you need to understand the pathology and patho biomechanics of that particular condition so without knowing pathology you cannot go ahead with the treatment plan without knowing pathology also pathomechanics then understand patient's pain pattern and behavior is of utmost important and staying update with the evidences so this five things will help you to choose the modality i'm very sure you will have one or two options left in your hand after uh, going through these five steps and you will already get the answers sometimes the uh, patients uh, are very dependent on particular modality and you have to deal with them very tactfully you should educate the patient about the modality workability and extent of pain relief and uh, you also should explain the hazards of repeated using of those modalities sometimes patients uh, tend to take a same treatment from multiple different centers i have also come across such patients who uh, are uh, taking same treatment uh, at multiple sessions uh, multiple uh, centers on the same day and uh, you will see that your treatment is not working because they are overdosing particular thing or uh, or maybe they are not respecting the tissue recovery phase or uh, something is missed out in the history taking process so here you really need to understand that uh, how much and when to do what to do behavior of patients is very crucial here to decide which uh, where to go which path to choose okay so next slide please coming to the adaptiveness to the patient's conditions so also in certain situations uh you will expect uh, you will not expect certain events to take place like uh there can be acute exacerbations of certain conditions like a patient undergoing respiratory rehabilitation for copd conditions and uh, he is a uh, uh, based uh, he is in the phase 3 of program and one fine day he has the acute exacerbations so you have to change your plan of action there you cannot stay stuck with the same uh, program that has been planned over there there uh, there can be an athlete uh, who has a uh, who has uh, who have got a new injury during rehab he might not uh, reveal the uh, extent or uh, intensity of injury just to uh, just in order to avoid a uh, slow down of the slowing down process of the rehab so you need to understand uh where you have to stop where you have to slow down your process where you have to change your plan of action there can be deterioration of conditions like in parkinson's patients uh despite of medical and physiotherapeutic management and all sort of care being taken uh but still patient is deteriorating day by day so here you need to know like uh how to change the plan from a uh, progressive rehab to retrograde rehab also yes so it is not always progressing ahead we have to some sometimes uh, because of circumstances we have to down regulate a process of rehabilitation uh sometimes patient do not respond to the rehab there is no change in the range strength or any uh, functions functional outcomes despite of 3 to 4 weeks of 
uh, we have there has to be some change on everyday basis but still if there is no change being observed then you have to reevaluate where you are going wrong where needs to where the dosage needs to be planned further okay you can't just blame that the patient is not uh, doing properly patient is not being regular it's not always the case uh, it can be the case but it is not always so so you just just have a reevaluate uh, where things are going out of track then a uh, patient's rigid mind may uh, also at times uh, at times the second surgery is also required uh, the surgeon has advised a second surgery and you are in the uh, rehab process because of first surgery the rehab after the first surgery and there you need to change again slightly change your plan of action so at, at times patients are very rigid uh, to push away the idea of surgery they they they, they think that uh, i will work hardest and i will work my best possible to bring up the range or to bring up the functions but despite of all the efforts being put the re- recovery is not up to the expectations and then you have to actually explain the patient for going ahead with surgery because the surgery will actually help relieve the patient's problem very fast and uh, recovery will be very fast so the productive period of the patient's life will be saved so uh even if uh, uh certain at times you need to balance the uh time frame the potential of recovery uh patients uh, uh patients years of productivity loss uh patient the other problems that are being created because of the problem so you need to address so much of loss that patient is going through uh and slow reevaluate what is the best possible option for your patient don't be rigid on physiotherapy physiotherapy and don't be uh, so uh, 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 uh don't be so uh you know uh passive regarding physiotherapy also so optimize the outcome optimizations of the functional expectations is of at the most important here a uh, time frame has to be taken care of very wisely here so can you please go to next slide yes so yeah colorful evolving novel world of research so yeah in the process uh, some of the therapists uh, are actually losing out Uh, or or are are de tracking themselves from the recent advances so uh, i request everyone to be critical about uh, evidences so so it's good to know what is uh, what are the recent evidences regarding uh, novel treatments are available and not only um, physiotherapeutic uh, options of treatment uh, we should be aware of we should also know uh, surgical and medical management for the, the advances that are taking place in surgical and medi- uh, medical management of particular conditions that we are working at because uh, because those management also affect our treatment so we need to swift in accord accordance with the, what is going on that what are the trending things so we cannot stay stuck that this particular book has this program but now because the surgery plan is changed your treatment can also be changing uh because the medicines are uh better or you know onco you have you will see you will come across very new uh advances coming up so here you need to stay updated and you need to not rely blindly on particular evidence and not to ignore particular evidence but you have to critically analyze that is this a workable option for your is the best workable option for your patient here okay so then going on to the next uh, topic uh, so, so please change the slide that balancing heart and brain <laughs> so yes many patients have a different emotional expectations we also tend to develop some emotional bonding with patients uh but 
we really have to be very practical about potential of recovery uh, over enthusiasm of the patients irrational expectations from patients and or passive behavior of patients setbacks and failures uh, incompetence to treatment so there are many patient can present to you with many different uh, emotional uh, expectations or uh, uh, or they can be uh, into any different uh, state mindset state of mind so we can uh, we have to address uh, we have to deal with them empathetically and we should not let the, the emotions to decide our treatment plan we have to, if, if we know there is a potential of recovery we have, we have to push the patient to their uh, maximum potential uh, if we know that uh, the patient has been like the, the patient has already been already through very hard time in life we need to give them some break also so balancing two things is very important you you really need to balance heart and brain here at times uh, patients tend to share a uh, lots of things with you because we are the uh, health professional who are with the uh, patient most of the time so yeah so understand the irritability the depression extent of patient but understanding this you should not be uh, you should not let yourself down you should not uh, bog down by the emotional uh, environment that patient has created you in fact you should bring them out out of that uh, emotional shell that they are leaving you you should uh, be practical enough and push patient to the maximum possible uh, functionality yes capacity also uh, so yeah this this i think we should balance the uh, like heart and brain thing here but i have seen many therapists are uh, getting very emotional that uh, if the patient has some problem and they they tend to get over involved emotionally and here we need to be uh, we need to bring up plasticity in our behavior yeah so coming to the next topic uh, so can you please change the slide yeah working in different environment so being a physiotherapist is not a easy job so we work in a field job we work in private setup we work in a uh, at times we work in a government setups we work for home visits we work at a community level uh, so we so there are so many different uh, working environments we are working at and we really need to adapt to those environment and make the best possible use of resources available to us so uh, even sport therapist uh, you will see at times they uh, have to work at field and they, they have to be uh, there at uh, uh, their setup where all the equipments are available but at field setup uh, not everything is available and on the tools so you have to be competent and smart enough to make sure how to use what all resources to the best possible uh, outcomes so yeah said last slide please yeah this is my favorite topic like most of the juniors i have coming across are very rigid with the protocol that maggie has provided for assessment so yes uh, we all can not stay stuck to the same protocol like understand for the first thing you all need to understand how acute the problem is and you can i know every one of us you need to practice and learn special test and different techniques but not at the cost of patient's uh, condition uh, many special tests are provocative tests and doing them we we all know that they have potential to harm the tissue so uh, so in acute state you can uh, just slow down your process and you can you know wait sometimes so nobody will screw you up for not doing special tests if you have a good rationale or good understanding of why you have not done 
if you explain uh, anyone that uh, this special test is provocative and this might cause further tissue damage and a uh, patient is in acute state so let some pain to relax and uh, the false positivity of this test can be positive uh, can mislead us to you know uh, the false positive uh, uh, so many of the special tests are provocative tests and in acute conditions they tend to give us false positive results also so you need to slow down and if you give the rash, uh, proper uh, rationally understanding for why you have not doing special tests for particular condition nobody will uh, trouble you you just need to know why to why not to do yeah because they are provocative they can lead to further tissue damage so in acute state it's okay if, even if you are not uh, going ahead with a certain test so this is what i'm saying that uh, just because it is been told to you just because it is a part of syllabus just because you have to finish the case presentations don't mean hurry and uh, cause the damage to the patient or uh, the pain factor of patients can increase further and uh, the potential of recovery that we ha have earlier before the first injury can be lessened after the second injury that we have caused by doing some test so that's what i want to convey that don't be rigid please stuck to the treatment uh, or assessment program if you are in doubt please ask uh, your seniors or colleagues or please go and read these things everybody is there on toes to help you out but you uh, also have to put some effort on your end and uh, things will be working you will really get to learn a lot of things after doing or uh, after getting stuck at many things so uh, if you are stuck at something don't uh, bog yourself down uh, just, just try to find out your solutions and try to uh, get your answers from your seniors or the teachers who are there to help you out okay so uh, my last slide before before ending the session the take home message is have the adaptability don't be rigid be modifiable so yeah i i end my session over here and uh, uh, with this yeah so you can turn off the ppt now so with this the take home message is be adaptable don't be rigid be modifiable and i would like to have closure to this talk by uh, saying a sincere thanks to the chairperson dr parak sanchiti sir principal of the institute dr apurva shimpi sir executive director manisha sangmi ma'am uh, special thanks to dr tushar sir for it support and physio tv team and the viewers of the day thank you very much <laughs>